this evening. Two days later and Bishop Edgil still regrets nothing. Armed bandits ruin birthday party. A new youth sports classic is coming to Guyana. In the region, in St. Lucia. One man inadvertently committed a crime in full view of city officials and the media. And internationally, in Great Britain. See how one gang utilized technology to aid in contraband smuggling. From Safe TV headquarters in South Rival Gardens, this is Safe TV Headline News with George Gonzalez. Headline News is now being streamed live on our YouTube channel. Join us. One East Bank Demerara family is reeling after armed bandits violently stormed their home. Esther Sobers tells us that the robbery occurred during the victim's birthday celebration. What was supposed to be a birthday celebration for Roshan Lalji turned tragic as two gunmen invaded our home at Mokka Drive, East Bank Demerara. The bandits struck 12 this morning and relieved her of a gold chain valued at $40,000, whilst leaving her reputed husband nursing a gunshot wound. Lalji, who was visibly distraught, recounted what happened. I was sit, uh, went inside and I come back. A bit clear on the table. And I sit there and then I see two guys walk on the front. Then I saw them, the face of the tie up. And I start to hollering. Mm. I start hollering and I start calling my husband, Jack, Jack, Jack. With them. And then one of them, my friend was sitting there. And he get up and he go hold up on one of them. And he take the whole box of food and he shy. He get it eaten. And he shy the food on them. And he said that he get the hammer and he knocked in the chest. And apparently I was out inside, I was out here and then I hear the, the, the gun go off. And after the gun go off, the one of the guys say, um, let me go, let me go. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, why, why if he go? And we then said, let me go and they snatch, snatch the chain off my neck and they go back right through them. So when I go and I see my husband on the ground. Lalji reputed husband Ishwar Ramnot, also known as Jack, is currently in a critical condition at the Georgian Public Hospital. He was shot in the left side of his abdomen. And my friend hit him. They said to shoot, shoot. So apparently they were going to shoot my friend. But seeing that my husband come out from the room, and this is when they shot him. Instead, of, he fell down on the ground. The armed men allegedly entered from the northern side of the house. When Channel 2 headline news arrived, visible traces of shoe prints were seen in the yard, and one of the bandits even left his footwear behind. No suspect has been arrested yet, and investigations are ongoing. If you have any information regarding the identity of the assailants, please contact the police at 225-2317 or 911. Your assistance is greatly appreciated. Reporting for Channel 2 Headline News, I'm Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. He's had two days to think it over, but his answer remains the same. Our reporter Wendell Jeffrey spoke with PPPC parliamentarian Bishop Juan Edgel regarding his conduct in Parliament. The when men cheat it and the wife find them, was the first thing they did. They want to knock and shut the woman down. They want to slap on use bulliation to silence it because they can't see anything. The men want the details, you know, the action that the government took has convinced their own supporters in Georgetown, who didn't vote for us as the PDPC, that they're doing things wickedly and they're using full force and ignorance, violence, and exposure, just like men when they are caught in extramarital relationships. Parliamentarian Juan Edgel's behavior in the House of Parliament will hit him in the pocket. The MP confirmed that he has received a letter from the Clerk of the Parliament informing him that he will not be paid his salaries and allowances for the time that he has been suspended. However, the suspended Member of Parliament is unrelenting. The Speaker must realize that I don't sit in the National Assembly to please him. I sit in the National Assembly to represent the people. The bishop said that the speaker could not teach him anything as he is experienced in what he does. I haven't learned the lesson. My lesson was already taught. I know how to be respectful to people. I know how to present my case. I know how to make an appeal. I know how to represent my constituency. I know how to stand firm on the point of principle. The speaker can't teach me that. 
I know that. I didn't come to the assembly to learn that from him or anybody in there. I've been doing that for 30 years. Mr. Edgell said that the effect of the stance he took in Parliament is already causing changes in the House. You know what the assembly closed last night? Minister 11. Because he has already started to feel the pinch of his draconian measure of guillotine scrutiny of the budget. He's already started to, to feel that. So why didn't he shut it down at 10 o'clock last night? If you were prepared to shut down the Ministry of the President's examination at 17 minutes after 12, because two hours had expired, why last night at 10 o'clock, you didn't use the same measure to guillotine and shut down the session? Why it went till minutes to 11? The former junior minister said that his status among the Guyanese people has been emboldened and enlarged. He said that his message has become credible. People who didn't even want to believe before, their actions have made me a credible messenger. And I salute them for allowing me to be elevated in the minds of people that my message is credible and people are seeing them for who they are. For Channel 2 Headline News, I am Wendell Jeffrey. Thanks, Wendell. The development of the nation will come from the hinterland. At least that's the view of Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Sidney Alacock, who delivered his budget debate presentation yesterday. In an earlier interview, he advocated for the strategic and rapid construction of the Linden Lethem Road as a means of achieving development goals for the hinterland. The completion of the Linden Lethem Road will bridge the current gap in the Pan American Highway. Many believe that this link would bode well for the growth of the continent as a whole. For example, the road will give the nations of Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina a direct link to the Caribbean. But this raises some questions for Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Sidney Alacock. We just spoke about the road going into the hinterland. But what is it that we have out there that is going to allow us to use the road? At the moment, the road or the trail, when, it, or when the road is completed, it is poised to use us, not us using the road. It would be wise for the government to avoid the pitfall of allowing communities along the road to be left behind. The Indigenous Affairs Minister stresses the opinion that without a proper development strategy, our neighbors may benefit more from the road than us. That we should have industries, cottage industries, our own transport um, mechanism, our own companies, our own management to be able to and have the development of renewable energy so we have cheaper electricity and to have value-added products, things made right within the region so you're bringing out finished products, uh, value-added products so that you could compete on the market, on the coast uh, in the Caribbean and elsewhere. Minister Alacock holds the view that these communities should be the main beneficiaries of economic growth spurred by the road. Nonetheless, he emphasizes that the success of the project relies on the cooperation of all citizens. To have that, you have to have the confidence of the people. And here is where we need young leadership, young, confident leaders in the communities with a vision that is going to help their communities to grow their economy and to be part of the unification of this country. We need that sort of a unification. The past three national budgets passed by the coalition government were crafted with the intention of encouraging the economic independence of hinterland communities. In Minister Alacock's view, commercial, agricultural, and industrial estates along a fully paved linden Letham Road will be a key factor in pushing hinterland development and, as an extension, the First Peoples of Guyana. Don't go away. We have more news for you after the break. 
Shop at John Lewis Styles in December and you could win one RCA tablet every day. Yes, every day. And that's not all. Four persons will win one million dollars to spend in the store. Just imagine, one million dollars in clothing, shoes, and accessories. Enter to win with every five thousand dollars you spend. So shop now to win one tablet every day and one million dollars to spend in the store. John Lewis Styles. Simply different. Season's greetings from Kisul's Furniture Store. We bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Get ready for the concert of a lifetime. The Restoration of Life Ministries presents Worship His Majesty on December 14th at 6 p.m. Restoration Life Ministry with special guest Samuel Meras, Earl Bishop. RLM Dancing, Pastor Sean Sobers, and the Prophetic Brief. Don't you miss this. It's Saturday, December 14th, 6 p.m. Admission free. Hosted by Apostle Ridley. It's that time of year when you break out all the cool and fancy stuff to decorate your home. National Hardware Supercenter and Water Street locations got the ideal furniture collection for the dining and living rooms. Choose from these quality sofa sets and recliners to add that perfect holiday setting. Our stylish dining sets will add a unique touch of class to your decor. The quality and designs are unmatched. We add that extra feeling of Christmas with this choice of furniture in the mega holiday deals happening now at your Do It Best Stores National Hardware. For the best Creole food in town, come to Ridley's Restaurant. Taste our hot meals, fresh bread, and sweet pastries. Our spacious dining hall is free for all occasions. For reservations and more, call 226-2518 or 225-7245. We're open Monday to Saturday from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Wrigley's Restaurant, located at 38 Rob Street, Lacey Town, between King and Wellington Streets. For breakfast, lunch, and dinner, Wrigley's Restaurant. Tasty and healthy eating. What's wrong with your AC? It's not working. Well, we wouldn't be able to continue this meeting anymore because this place is extremely hot. Wait, 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 please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, what's the dinner? I had a hard day. I'm sorry you have a hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. Welcome back. As Guyana prepares for the 2020 Olympic Games, the King Medas Pansy Adonis Classic is designed to sensitize the youth of Guyana to a world-class sporting competition. Wendell Jeffrey spoke to one of the participants of the Games and filed this report. Put in your hard work from young and never give up because if you put in your hard work from young, as you get older and progressing, as I, I'm taking this from my own experience, since I started from young, you know, if you start from young and work hard, when you get 
older, you're going to have a better future. That was 11-year-old Keisha Midas King, and she was on set with her father today, Anthony, promoting the King Midas Pansy Adonis Classic. The event is a replication of a Junior Olympic Games. And this year, uh, we've in introduced the first Junior Olympic Games in Guyana, and it will be staged at the Boxing Community Ground. I'm here to represent and um, help fund the, um, the King Medas Pansy Adonis Junior Olympics that is going to start from um, that is going to start from tomorrow, all the way to Sunday. And he said that the sporting event is mainly track and field. It's basically track and field. And um, there will be the 100, 200, 400, 800, and 1500. We'll have the high jump, the shot put, discus, javelin, right? Uh, javelin. And for the first time in Guyana, uh, we'll introduce in shot put, the 1K for the, for the 8 and under kids, the turbo javelin will also be introduced in Guyana and the 1K discuss for the younger kids. The ages of the participants, this is another first also in Guyana, uh, from the age of three years old right up to masters because uh, my kids started very young in the United States of America and it's the same pattern I want to introduce into Guyana in, in the Junior Olympic Games. Keisha spoke of her involvement in the sporting arena. Most of my, um, my prizes have been like both um, trophies, medals, and awards overall. Like, it's just like uh, kind of like a combination of a set of stuff. My first award I have gotten for eight and under when I like since I was um like probably a few years ago when I was in eight and under. I have gotten that for athlete of the year for females, but for um for youth females. But um my most recent athlete of the year, my second one is for overall youth, not just for females, all, for all genders, for all youth and such. Medas King said that he is very grateful to the ministries of sport and education and to the many other sponsors for their invaluable contribution to the event. He said that you can go online and register to be part of the events or just go to visit and learn of what his organization does. The athletes after the race, they can go back and see themselves there. Um, for this year, we'll be using a, a drone in order to, to, um, to, to record the road race and also at the track meet and everything will be uploaded day by day onto the website. The reason why I'm using the word Olympic is because I want to introduce something to the kids in Guyana with the name Olympic in mind. So when they in their own self said that I went to this Olympic game. Maybe with that mindset, it's going to encourage them to go on to the real Olympic games. My website, um, kmpasport.com. It is kmpasport.com where you can go and register now. For Channel 2 Headline News, I am Wendell Jeffrey. Thanks, Wendell. Demerara Distillers Limited, in conjunction with Trinidadian company Icon LNG, are running a pilot program that is projected to save the company money and reduce their carbon footprint. And, and the quest to minimize our cost and find competitive advantage, we found uh, a project that resonated with us that targets the second highest element of cost in the cost structure of our industry. Chairman of Demerara Distillers Limited, Komal Samaru, described his company's commitment to being competitive in a world market fueled by giant corporations. For DDL, power generation is the second largest operating expense after molasses. So, to reduce costs, DDL has begun a six-month dual-fuel engine pilot program the program will see the use of liquefied natural gas in their electrical generators. The generators at their Diamond East Bank Demerara distillery now utilize a mixture of 60% liquid natural gas to 40% heavy fuel oil. This project is the first of its kind in Guyana. DDL considers the adoption of such fuel as being in line with the government's green agenda. 
So I believe that given Guyana's uh, quest for clean energy, uh, I think this project resonates very, very uh, neatly within the context of, of national policy. And of course, it's a, it's a, in our business, we also have always been very conscious of the need for us to operate in an environmentally friendly way. Liquefied natural gas produces around 40% less CO2 emissions, 70% less nitrogen oxides, and a 70% reduction in particulate matter, or soot, as compared to heavy fuel oil. A Trinidadian company, Icon LNG, is assisting DDL with the project by providing the fuel, equipment, and logistical support. Despite being cleaner than petroleum, liquid natural gas is still a fossil fuel. Nonetheless, Mahender Sharma, CEO of Guyana Energy Agency, echoes Samaru's view of LNG playing a part in clean energy generation. The question is not natural gas or renewable energy. The question is when. And that question, I don't have all of the answers to at this time, but we are working on getting those answers. So we see gas liquid fuels, hydro, solar, and wind all playing a role. In 2016, when we did work on this, the position was 150 megawatt, 150 to 180 megawatt hydro, 26 megawatt wind, 10 megawatt solar, small amounts of bioenergy. We have gas now, so we need to figure out what that means in that, in that context. And as best as I understand it, it's a question of timing. DDL is not the only company that has expressed interest in LNG. Earlier this year, Guyana Power and Light announced that it was accepting bids to build a 50 megawatt natural gas power plant. The Child Care and Protection Agency aims to prevent, to reduce, and to alleviate the effects of abuse and neglect of children. Today, the agency held their annual staff conference. Esther Sobers reports. In her address to the staff of the Child Care and Protection Agency, Director Anne Green reflected upon the agency work thus far. Green also used the time to outline some of the agency's plans for 2018. Outlook for 2018. Serious social change. Using the concept of the system theory, looking at the child in his environment, the objective is to reduce the risk factors and increase the protective factors. The risk factors are the things, the situation that are creating children vulnerability to abuse and mal maltreatment. High on the list is parents' lack of capacity and adults' attitude towards children in general. There must be change in the attitude and behavior towards children. Children must be viewed and treated differently. Their rights must be respected, and they must be afforded opportunity for positive growth and development. Accordingly, the work program is thus structured. We will continue to increase public awareness on the issues of child abuse and to the work of the agency. According to Green, next year will be transformative for the agency. The CNPA will have more child-centered focus. The focus is the promotion of family-based care for children in need of alternative care. This means emphasis will continue to be placed on lessening the need for children to be in, in a position that needs alternative care. We're not going to put them in that position. We're going to help by building the capacity of the parents for the room and returning children from institutional care to their biological parents if possible and also extending the foster care program that has now ventured into the mentorship program. In the closing address, Minister within the Ministry of Social Protection, Keith Scott, reflected on the need for all members of the community to be involved in raising off children. That it takes a village to raise a, raise a child. I am a product of being raised in a city but felt like if I was in a village. 
in my area, which is we song of the tongue. In my area, every single one of us, the young the youngsters, um little baby see the big the seat the for standard every day that we pass an exam. The entire area celebrated with us. And that stuck with me. I felt as if I was owned by the by the community. That today is missing. Today we have lost that feeling where the village owns and protects the child. The CNPA has rolled out several programs aimed in educating families and teenage mothers to better protect and care for children. Reporting for Channel 2 Headline News, I'm Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. Still ahead, we have our regional news, our international news, and your seven-day weather forecast. Stay with us. Season's greetings from Kisumu's Furniture Store. For the best Creole food in town, come to Ridley's Restaurant. Taste our hot meals, fresh bread, and sweet pastries. Our spacious dining hall is free for all occasions. For reservations and more, call 226-2518 or 225-7245. We're open Monday to Saturday from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Wrigley's Restaurant, located at 38 Rob Street, Lacey Town, between King and Wellington Streets. For breakfast, lunch, and dinner, Wrigley's Restaurant. Tasty and healthy eating. Shop at John Lewis Styles in December and you could win one RCA tablet every day. Yes, every day. And that's not all. Four persons will win one million dollars to spend in the store. Just imagine, one million dollars in clothing, shoes, and accessories. Enter to win with every five thousand dollars you spend. So shop now to win one tablet every day and one million dollars to spend in the store. John Lewis Styles. Simply different. This place is really hot. What's wrong with your AC? It's not working. Well, we wouldn't be able to continue this meeting anymore because this place is extremely hot. Wait, wait, wait. Please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, what's the dinner? I had a hard day. I'm sorry you had a hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princeton Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. when you break out all the cool and fancy stuff to decorate your home. National Hardware Supercenter and Water Street locations got the ideal furniture collection for the dining and living rooms. Choose from these quality sofa sets and recliners to add that perfect holiday setting. Our stylish dining sets will add a unique touch of class to your decor. The quality and designs are unmatched. We add that extra feeling of Christmas with this choice of furniture in the mega holiday deals happening now at your Do It Best Stores National Hardware. Welcome back, and we now take a look at the region, like Guyana. St. Lucia has a problem with public urination. This year, the mayor of Castries declared the beginning of a campaign to punish such offenders. 
But what happens when persons go literally behind his back to answer the call of nature? HTS News Force has more. In January of this year, Castries Mayor Peterson Francis vowed to clamp down on a number of misdemeanors occurring in the city. While to the average individual, the acts of urinating, spitting, and walking bareback in public may appear benign, the mayor noted the environmental health issues and overall public discomfort associated with the former two in particular. But what if it happens with impunity, literally behind his back? While Mayor Francis addressed the vendors during Tuesday's market festival celebrations on the Castries Market, news cameras inadvertently filmed a man in the background urinating on the Castries waterfront. The man seen here in the red shirt, probably unaware that he was being filmed, proceeded to unzip his trousers and let it all out. Yes, all during the mayor's address. Ironically, this happened while Mayor Francis spoke of a redevelopment of the Castries Market and the CCC's goals of creating a cleaner, safer city. But that was not all. Pedestrians, including tourists, were spotted walking right next to the offender as he urinated. The CCC has noted that there are seven public toilets available in the city, yet some individuals choose not to use them, preferring to urinate in public. Apart from the stains, which contribute to the destruction of the aesthetics of the area, infections can also be transmitted through urine. In addition, the urea content in urine attracts flies and cockroaches, which are carriers of bacteria. When the mayor made his announcement this January, he stated that offenders would be charged under the Litter Act Chapter 6.05 Revised Laws of Seleucia 2008 and the Criminal Code Chapter 301 Revised Laws of Seleucia 2013. Miguel Favre, HTS News Force. And internationally. In Great Britain, the Ministry of Defense has released footage of a gang caught using a drone to deliver contraband to prisons. The ringleader, the ringleader of the gang, Craig Hickenbottom, organized the flights from behind bars. He's been sentenced to an extra seven years and two months in jail. BBC News reports. And now for your 7-day weather forecast.
And that's Channel 2 Headline News for this Wednesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to find Channel 2 Headline News on Facebook and YouTube. You can also tune in tomorrow morning at 6.30 for a rebroadcast and Thursday evening at 7 o'clock for more news. For now, I'm George Gonzalez, signing out from this newscast, saying thank you for welcoming us into your homes and do have a blessed evening.